Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm showing off the the new god. I'm I'm here with the watching the patch notes live, and I'm just gonna give my opinions on the god kit. I usually don't watch these lives, but let's see let's see how it is. The kit. Awesome. Let's right. let's she see is what's a going physical on. Physical melee assassin. Oh, I love the conquest map by the way. So we're gonna we're show what happens when you might fight Kleena first. Uh. What? <laughs> It, she is a tear in the jungle. Let's show off the rest Okay, of that's the actually cool. That was cool as hell. Already. That was spooky. And of course. You gotta do it. Show up. Show everybody. There it is. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the awesome only thing I knew about there. this god was she, she could walk through walls. Really horrifying. Oh, yeah. And so many things to go over there. Uh, I mean,. Let's get into it. Let's start with that passive. Uh, lay it down for us. Yep. So the passive is Phantasmal. So the idea here is that she can essentially take on a ghostly form and walk into walls. And so you can see here, as I walk into that wall, I have a brief entering time before I go in there. But now that I'm in here, I can actually walk completely into this wall, walk through it, walk anywhere I want to, um, and then I can exit <laughs> at any time. And you can see that I'm taking uh -huh. more and more and more damage as I stay inside here. This passive has a lot of rules about what you can or can't do with it. So the first one is I like that. I you like only that. do this once every 16 seconds, and it happens when you leave. Um, the second is that if you're crippled or below 25% health, you can't enter the wall. So if you're able to, to cripple her or get her low enough health, she can't just immediately sneak away into a wall. Um, and the third is that uh, when you have this on cooldown, you actually have an indicator in-game like, hey, you can't do this. You can't go into this wall at all. So there's a whole bunch going on here to make sure that, one, it's conveyed really clearly as to your ability to enter a wall, but also making sure that there's counterplay options. Uh, when you're inside a wall, you can see here that I have this debuff icon. You might be able yeah, to hear creepy music. Right here, you might have heard that earlier. That's an indicator that she is actually in the wall next to you. And if I walk out of it and walk in it, you'll be able to hear an audio cue that you've actually entered within an area around her. So you have some indication that you might get uh, jumped on within a few seconds. <laughs> Wow. So the ability is an absolute technical marvel. The amount of yes. programming and engineering that went into this ability, this single ability, um, might be one of the top in all of Smite history to rival Olaron Alt and the Morrigan. Honestly. Um, oh, I believe it. The, all the interesting game still running on had to make UDK. Involving what we wanted to show, what we wanted to render, wall players were in the in the mm -hmm. wall, how we got the most important information, how we showed those borders, the boundaries of them. Um, showed nearby gods, as well as this whole, like, kind of dark realm she's in, because if you just walk into a smite wall, like, you'll see all sorts of the insides of video game models or, you know, clipping through things, so you couldn't just walk the camera through the wall. We really had to change the visuals intensely to even make this work at all Correct. Um, playable, and all of these things just came together in an absolute beauty, and like I, I am just so proud of our team. This is a this is really working magic as far as video games go. I'm I'm just really impressed. This is something we've been wanting to do for years, and we finally made it happen. Yeah, especially like from just how we actually present this. Like the programming team has an algorithm that runs the map to generate these walls because again, like this rock might have collision that's separate from this wall, and even though as a player, this looks like one solid unit. It very much isn't. So we actually had to generate these walls on the fly in real time during gameplay. The team did a whole bunch of optimization. I, I don't think we can really understate how much tech went into this. And overall, I can appreciate that experience for this. from a coding super happy with perspective. I can appreciate that. And I mean, it just from a perspective, too, of somebody who isn't I'm not as much on the back end with the programming side, but even just from my perspective, it is insane to look at the way that the imagery of it all looks so good. The way that the yeah, I mean, gods it looks, are highlighted, looks pretty cool. everything about looks it spooky. looks spooky, so good from every angle. Uh, it's it's a great addition. So, uh, Definitely <laughs> feels like you're becoming a ghost going through walls. Yeah. The only other thing I want to mention is there's a few other rules yeah. here. Um, when she's in the wall, she is completely unseeable and undamageable. So things like new ult won't hit you. Um, oh. That makes sure that there's no weird edge cases that can occur, but it also makes sense because he's like become completely intangible. Um, additionally, you can strong. actually see, so I have a ward here. There's definitely a clean in that wall. I can't see her. The only indication I have that she's there was the fact that I could like hear her around me. Um, and when she goes in the wall, she completely disappears as well. So that's the main rules that you'd, you'd want to know about when you're fighting this is when she's in the wall, she's very much safe. 
But again, she's taking tick damage while she's in there. So I'm gonna mute it to just say that that is very strong for things against Nuwa alt, Ares alt, and stuff like that for a passive. That's her passive to just go in on a wall and she can dodge abilities like that. That's pretty good. Yeah, anything going. Um, so there's a lot of counter. Can't use it while crippled there. though. And I think the only final thing to mention, because this passive again is it's probably the biggest part of her kit. Um, she has 10% physical ability life steal while she's inside a wall, as well as for a brief window when she exits. This is to kind of encourage aggression with it. You want to use it aggressively against your opponents and kind of offset the damage that you're taking inside the wall, at least for the very first window of opportunity you have with it. So just an extra nice thing that she can use if she wants to use this aggressively to be rewarded for it. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of questions, and Pon Pon, clarify me if I'm wrong, but just to, to make things a little bit easier, when people are like, Oh, can I new wall? Can I new alter in a wall? Can I Nox dash inside her and go into a wall? Can I can I uh, Horus dash to her and then she go in the wall? The answer is no to everything. Like we pretty much yep. remove Kleena from the game while she's in the wall. Yes. You don't get <laughs> so to do. Nox... We're, we're, we really try to make <laughs> someone sure will that figure we, it out. You know, someone we're will figure it out. Sure we get a lot of That's a challenge. Cases out of the way. <laughs> a lot of potentials for unintended gameplay. Really, we're focusing this entirely on Kleena's movement. Is the goal of it? We're not. With a hundred over hundreds characters at this game, there is an edge case that will break it. <laughs> I promise you, Ajax. But still, that's cool. That I'm glad they tested a bunch of stuff. Really testing, and you know, the people who love to try to find if uh, uh, any of those edge cases still work, please, please do report those, and we will take a look at them immediately. But that is our design intent, right, Pond? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds yep. like a challenge. And super rapid fire to answer some questions I'm seeing. Nox gets auto ejected because she can't eject inside the wall, so she just gets kicked out. Um, Athena, if you walk under before she enters a wall, you'll just go to the last valid location Kleena was standing. You can't the last walk under her while she's location inside a wall. Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, those are the major ones. Uh, Horus, when you start flying there, you'll just stop at the wall. Uh, Sukiyomi, if you alter before she enters the wall, you'll kind of uh, get. She'll be removed from your dash target list, so you, nothing will really happen in that case. So we've oh, done a lot wow. of testing here. I'm sure you guys will find something, but we've done a, <laughs> as best we can to make sure that this very that's so strong, like game-breaking passive that's so strong again that you could dodge things like sukuyomi out with just a passive it's not an ability it's not an ultimate it's it's a passive it's it's a pretty short yeah, cooldown the thing too that hurt my feeling about that was learning that you can't uh you know give high fives to like turn of he's in the wall so compare that to yeah. get pass uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how about uh how about banshee's whale let's see what her uh yeah. her first ability looks like so let's do the first ability we have the banshee's whale this is a three-part channel Ooh. Something weird. There we That's go. That's cool. Sometimes in this uh, dev, it can get a little bit funky. So we got the scream. It's three parts. The final hit hits the hardest. And you can see that final scream actually causes the target to be silenced. But that's not all. They're also deafened when that hits. Um, so I, if Lermi is here, if she wants to cast the ultimate and then hit me with the deafen ability, you'll be able to hear the audio disappear. So you can hear that kind of dip out and then dip back in of the audio. This is uh, okay. I'm glad that's a short your ability to CC. Hear for just a brief window of time, and then so like a raw could potentially snipe you or Thor could dunk on you. Uh, just a nice nod to the fact that this is a loud banshee just wailing into your ear. That is so wild. And that's not all. It has a passive interaction. Hey, hold on. When you're inside the wall, you can cast it along the wall, and you might wonder what is that thing that's uh, screaming instead of Kleena. Well, if when we can cast the one. You have spooky wall face that was at the end of the trailer. Oh, that's so cool. That's mm -hmm. so cool. <laughs> yeah, so I know uh, there was some expectations potentially for a stance changer for this character, you know, which we're not super keen on doing, but you can kind of look at this kit as if it was a stance change because you have the in the wall kit and the out of the wall kit. You have a lot of different changes to all the abilities depending on whether you're in or out. I love that so much. That's so cool, man. And it is just insanely spooky we have it's jump scares man i'm gonna be walking through the jungle uh going to get my speed camp and a face is gonna pop out and i'm gonna like mm -hmm. alt f4 by accident out of fear yep okay i'm gonna mention real so quick that the i think they're ability. testing something new with the death and mechanic it's a very short cc i was worried it was gonna be longer i think it's not gonna change anything with that short cc but Standard yeah stuff. but you can see that that target is marked and what that target mark means is that they can no longer see me so if I were to hit the center Odin, the center Odin would lose sight of me, but the other Odins can totally see me still. It's a targeted stealth. So only the person that I hit is actually views me as stealth. And if when he wants to cast it, we can see what that looks like. So she completely disappears from my vision. If she then uses the two and then attacks, 
I like that. You can that. see that she kind of flickers right. into existence for that attack. I can also try and hit her to also reveal her. So it follows a lot of similar rules with like revealing based off being hit. Um, but this is essentially a way that she can hit you with the two, and then if she wants to try and run away, she potentially can. Uh, if she wants to try and get into a wall, she can. If she wants to get around you and surprise you from the other side, where you weren't expecting it, she can. But the rest of the team can see this. Uh, and so you can also kind of play off your team's ability of fighting Kleena to potentially get vision on her as well. Um, just a very different take on the stealth that we've had in the game from before, from other stealths that we have in the game. And the fact that you have to hit someone before you can become stealth mm -hmm. helps remove a lot of the other frustration elements regarding stealth, where you can use it when you're you know, very far away um, uh, to engage or to in escape. Really, this is like a really unique take on combat stealth, which lets her get a little bit of positioning or a very specific one-on-one -on -one advantage in a skirmish, which I just think is super smart design and a very cool evolution for the game. Yeah, I do. It, think, it adds, I do. I it do adds such a that. level of mental play too to being in the jungle because if you hit, if you're in a jungle fight, you hit somebody with that and then dive into a wall to attack. Even if the blind wears off and they can hear you, there are walls all over the jungle. Who knows where you're going to come from? So it really and there's a lot of play there. I think that's really cool. And it is an AOE, so if you hit multiple gods with the explosion, they all can't see you, so it's not just one person. So if you're able to catch them all together, oh. you could potentially deny the entire team vision of you if you are able to get that skill shot off. So much to play. That's super awesome. Uh, so how about uh, ability number three? What's what's going on with ability number three? Mm -hmm. So ability number three is Lurching Claw. Uh, this is the movement ability of the kit, as well as a kind of different way of doing a cone attack. So we have a charge into a cone fire. So you can see it's pretty straightforward there. The dash does damage, the claw does damage, but you can stop it at any point. So you can charge forward there, you can charge, cancel a bit early, you can aim freely while you're charging, turn around and cancel wherever you want. I love it so when this is basically can you can early choose like to move as far as you want, and then once so you cancel, better. you're going to do that claw attack no matter what. This does have another interaction with the, the wall, which is you can cast it while you're inside the wall. So you saw when we, we showed off the ability at the start, you can actually just jump out of the wall. And you can see you actually cover quite a bit of distance, as well as this charge is a little bit longer as well. So the, the normal dash... I like, love I that. That's so cool. Dash, uh, For a non-horror game, they did a really good job. Also note that ability top two top just cannot be used in a wall. Correct. Yeah, uh, so the, one people three, might have been saying, what about the ability to wall? And the answer is mm -hmm. no. Yep, and you can see similar. You also can't fire relics as, as when you're inside it as well. Similar things there. That you can't return the to base. Nope. If you try, if you're trying back, you can start it, but uh, you you're damage. gonna take damage and not be able to. But yep. This is your ability, especially if you're trying to gank like mid lane. This is your way to like you can jump into this wall. Maybe you know there's no ward here. Jump up here and then come out of this wall. Gank the enemy mid laner. Pretty pretty spooky stuff if you try to face it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Love it too, and I love that you can like. She you, seems like you very strong with her abilities. Get behind. It's great for positioning or for Depends stopping on damage, somebody from running by getting in front of them. Super handy. Uh, so let's talk about uh, her ult. Let's talk about the final tearing the veil. Yep. So the final portion of the of the kit is the ult tearing the veil. This is where we, she uses her claw to tear a uh, rift between the the veil of life and death and call forth her banshees. So she casts this. A rip opens, and you can see there it kind of bursts open in a, in a big attack, and then a whole bunch of banshees come flying out of it. Um, like this a ability has almost. that burst is higher damage, followed by tick damage that decreases, so you really want to try and land that initial hit does quite a bit of damage. Um, but enemies do have a lot of warning that is coming, so they can try and avoid it. You can see there, she tried to hit me with it from inside the wall, but I saw it in time was able to back up. you got to be careful when you're fighting against the cleaner. But I also have two charges of this, so this is actually a charge-based ultimate. Um, and the reason ah. for that is one, to give you a bit of flexibility when using this, so you can choose to cut off opponents, you can choose to try and directly damage them, but when you're inside the wall, it actually acts completely differently. So here you can see I cast it, and it just kind of sits there on the wall. It's actually not going to do anything. And it's not going to do anything until an enemy actually walks over here, if Lermy is available. There you go. Oh, it's like a trap! You can see it actually activates there when she actually walked near it. So she's oh able to place wall-based traps that go off. So if you want to use this to try and potentially, uh, one place that was pretty common for us to use was at this Gold Fury Pit. If you place one here, and you can kind of cut off this path, uh, enemies who walk in here... I, I gotta, hold on. Can I just say, hi Res, you have done such an amazing job with this god, considering Smite is not a horror game. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. That is that is amazing. I Again, I, I don't know how it'll be gameplay-wise, 
But that, that's I, the theme of this god is so good. good cutting off paths, um, mm -hmm. as it's a pretty pow potent slow, even if you don't get hit like, by the good initial stuff. hit. Um, which you know, it's a new god, so it's got to have slow. Uh, thanks, Bon right. for that one. And, um, You're welcome. <laughs> it's also when you're placing your traps, it can be really smart to place them so that they open and like fire further down a jungle path instead of just like into a short path. Like you might think you want to just place them in that short bottleneck there, but it's much better to place one, yeah, right there. Because you effectively cut off the difference between those two placements, cuts off a large amount of choices where you can run right past it briefly, but if you run past the other one, you cannot really retreat into your own jungle without getting yeah. hit by it. So really some smart positioning here. It could do a lot to route enemies around. It's a little harder to just get straight up burst damage with this, but you can do a lot of good to uh, lock people in place. And um, she also has a really fun jump animation. I love this design. Yeah, spamming yeah, internally like like nonstop. So <laughs> the animation team really went above and beyond on this character all across the board. And it, she's an absolutely beautiful goddess. Oh yeah, and there's one other thing I wanted to show off since we were able to show it is, again, a lot of teams did a lot of new tech to really make sure this character came to life. And one thing that you saw in the trailer was when she screamed, you actually saw the the kind of like mask tear apart and the the hood tear apart, and you had the the kind of spooky face reveal. So I just want to make sure that we show that off. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, she does actually do it in game. Her hood um, melts away, and her hair all flies back, and her face changes. Uh, let's do, let's slow mo it so you can see it. Oh, she turned around. So there's the spooky face. On slow mo, some of it looks a little bit weird, but you can see there that the the hood completely fades away. There it goes. The hair oh, goes flying. Great. The face gets revealed. Yeah. We also use that in some of her other animations, um, you know, some of her other just flavor animations outside of the ability. So you'll see that, uh, I believe, on her intro when you first select her in a lobby. She'll come out and scare mm -hmm. you, and then she'll put on her, her cleaner face um, just to hide away. And uh, you'll also see that in some other animations throughout the kit. All right. At this point, I think it's safe for me to just give my opinion on the god overall. Passive? That is such a good passive. So uh, one thing they mentioned is that there is no way to tell she is in the wall except for your debuff bar. And I mean... So, so I think at lower levels of play, uh, players don't look at their debuff bar too much. So this this is going to be a really, really good god at low level play. I don't know if she's going to be a pub stomp god. But yeah, just appearing out of nowhere, even if you warded, um, that's pretty good. At higher level plays, I think it'll be pretty obvious that you see the debuff and you're like, okay, she's near me and you could back up. But again, just the fact that these walls are so thick that she could, you know, come from all the way over here and then like, or I guess this wall is a better opinion, that she could all come all the way over here, come over here, and then dash through. The dash is really long in the walls. But overall, I love this god. Uh, the fact that they, uh, her abilities are different in the walls, and it's really spooky. I, I mean, I, I love it. The animations are incredible. Uh, the god kit, I think it seems strong. It seems strong. It depends on the damage numbers, of course, but uh, that can be brought back if it's too high or whatever. But kit-wise, I, I, I love the kit. The ultimate seemed lackluster to me until I saw that you could put traps. I think, I think yeah, cutting off someone from the jungle or, like, if you're having a fire giant fight or whatever and you have some traps set up, that way when they walk too far forward, you just collapse on them. It looks like it does a ton of damage for the ult. Um, I wonder how many... I think you can only put two alt traps around the map, and I'm guessing if you use one... While there's a trap, uh, it's going to take get rid of the trap. or I don't know. I'll have to see the details on that. But that that's awesome. That's really cool. Thank you for showing in-game. I appreciate yeah. that a lot. Uh, let's uh, let's and move passive on. Let's looks so good, the, too. Uh, the skin she's going to come out with. So we have uh, her basic. I might as well show skin. the skin, too. Uh, the I'm going to go over the rest of the match. Skin. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll look at that. That looks awesome. I love the red hood and, like, the red blade. It's amazing. Yes. It's all three color, yeah. All the recolors and skins are really good. I agree. Oh yeah, that looks great. This actually might be the the bug version. So I can't uh, tell. The I think art... so. Yeah. So the so the ascended art actually looks more like this. The recolor is that kind of like deep red. Uh, it will have that yeah. deep red. We identified an issue where they were kind of mixing when they shouldn't be. So you'll see the deep red version that you saw on the card artwork. And this is going to match close to the Ascended one that I'm sure we'll see in a little we'll bit. We'll see. If we see the Ascended turn around and it looks the same, then we'll confirm the bug uh, <laughs> for sure. I will... So we're all uh, being part of the QA team together right now. 
Yeah. Well, there's the ascended skin. Here we are at the ascended skin. So yeah. And I we can see had to do a card art with the banshee scream. You know, we couldn't have her look oh, yeah. as beautiful in all the card arts. I was like, we had to have one of these. And there's some pl cleaner players are more. Like, okay. Yeah. That's definitely more along the, the more. That's too close. So that uh, first yeah. turnaround was, I think, the bugged one. So you'll still see that red version later on in the patch once we get that sorted out. Sorry to the video team who made these nice turnarounds for us without uh, <laughs> before we confirmed before we confirmed that the bug existed. All doing so QA together the as a family. Yeah, yeah, that's looks, what the, that's what PTS great. and patch notes are for. That's like the whole point. Yeah. Uh, so good next skins. we have uh, the mean, masters. Her model's already so pretty good. Love the gold and blue always. I'm really curious how the diamond skin looks. Those looks are always really my good. Favorite. I love. I mean, just mm -hmm. this character in general is just so good to look at. Oh, oh I love the gold blade. color, like fog underneath. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And the blade looks so good. Yeah, good effects. It really effects. does. Ah, uh, that, that one's already good <laughs> the too. The golden black. I just like how much gold in general she has on her. I, I always and like it... the this golden black, but she just blue complements her so well that the 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 the, the, the diamond skin's all right. Actually, it's all right. Really great. It's still good though. As if there wasn't enough oh, the hair color, to yeah. play her. The hair color is also that deeper deeper blue. Yeah, the diamond complements really neat stuff. just her natural and character we color. we so also well. have one very special surprise in that she's actually getting a real skin this same update, right? That is exactly true. <laughs> oh, yes. I see the top hat. Oh. I see the top hat. you thought she couldn't it get is any creepier. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and not only as, did as we I make her of... creepier, oh, you, yeah. you got something for us? You go first. Oh, well, we got to see the turnaround. I was uh, kind of leading into it. I, I guess I jumped the gun a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that face oh, wow. and that and the head and the hair. A lot of changes up there too. Um, which this yeah. one has to have a banshee face scream as well, right? Yeah. No, the banshee oh, yeah. face is, believe it or not, scarier than that. I'm drawn to the skin because oh, wow. of the top hat, <laughs> obviously. And Horrifying also, when she uses the wall version, the wall version also has a different face as well. So uh, oh, definitely man. some surprises to look out for. And just the fun thing. I just think, realized this guy's going to be so bad character. in Arena. Uh, let's let's hear the voice line. There's no, the there's barely line. any walls in Arena. Those mean ones didn't pick me. You're gonna... They will know what it feels to be tossed aside. A good voice pack. That's creepy. You can go with these tidy <laughs> pillars really for like a second. <laughs> so this is also going to be a part of. This is in the Halloween chest that we mentioned above. This was the mystery skin that we uh we made y'all wait for. So. Just so many good things here with Kleena. We're so excited about her. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah. I, again, just I'm I I have chills. I have thr there were thrills. It's all good things happened today, and I am so happy y'all are hanging out. Uh, that is the end of the update show. Uh, thank you, Pont. Thank you, uh, AJ. Cool for stuff. Tagging along, good stuff. Explaining Kleena. All right, with that, I will go, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over the rest of the patch real quick. I just really wanted to uh, I really wanted to show that um, because I've never really done it live. But, no, cool God. I think she's, I think she's awesome. Um, cool kit. Uh, lots of uh, stuff you can do with it. She's got mobility. She's got uh, sneaky stuff. She doesn't seem if, – if you didn't have the indicator that she was in a wall near you, uh, she would be crazy strong like insanely strong that indicator actually is everything on the debuff bar it's such a little detail but it's so important um but yeah the thought of her her being played in arena is so funny to me because there's like four tidy pillars you could like set up your abilities and that's it <laughs> oh okay anyways uh so uh which one do are we looking at i think i wanted to look at the bonus update first so this is the bonus update this one is going live on october 5th it says uh, I thought they said later, but whatever. October 5th, uh, there's an Athena skin, there's a Fenris skin, um, Alquang skin, and there's a Scotty skin. All the skins look pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I'll get any of them. The Fenris skin looks like my favorite personally. But yeah, good solid skins overall. Um, let's go down. So Vampiric Shroud. I have not seen these yet because I was late to the patch notes. Um, physical protection from 10 to 5. Good change. Um, I know there was issues with even though I don't play Conquest, there was issues where people uh, were getting this item and it was just giving them too much early game pressure because of the extra physical defense. And it's so weird to me that the damage items even have defense to start with. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's it's a nerf that uh, isn't gonna make the item like you're still gonna get the item when you should. It's just gonna make it so that you're not as you know more tanky than you should be. Also, what is the snow effect that they added? I mean, I kind of like it. Why not? Yotun's wrath decreased from fifty to forty five. I guess it's it was the buff was too good. Uh, but it's still it's forty five is still a lot of power, so still solid item to get. Um, even in duel, I've been picking up Yotun's wrath. Transcendence decreased physical power from 45 to 40. Wow, yeah, I guess they overbuffed him a little bit too much. But again, still stronger than it was. Um, circuit decreased base damage from 140 to 500 to 100 to 400. Ah, I like Circuit uh, to play her in duel, but obviously she's not the greatest duel god. Increased physical power scale. Oh, wait, it's not a nerf, it's a power, it's a power adjustment. So if you build how much power, you would have to have a hundred more power than before for this what once you have over a hundred power than what you had like whatever last patch right then this ability will do more damage uh than previously so um but that's yeah wait is that right no guess no no you'd have no 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 I, that's that's incorrect i'm sorry <laughs> i think it's a nerf overall i'm pretty sure I don't, i'm gonna have to double check that later or somebody in the comments could do it for me because I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now um thunder crash no longer does damage on lightning smaller aoe uh before he teleports okay that's a weird change i guess increased damage on a thunder aoe um that's actually a pretty big buff 20 percent extra scaling Okay. Base added together, scaling out by 10%. Yeah. All right. So it's a small buff, but they changed it to just be the whole ability, I guess. Um, Because before, Raijin would do damage with the middle circle, and then he would teleport and do damage in the entire circle, and now it's just the entire circle. Okay. Um, RDO cooldown increased. Rip, but that's okay. Cerberus a protection debuff nerf. Um, so if we're going from 54 total protection debuff to 39 debuff. That's a, it's a, this is one of those things that it's like, it's a small, it's, uh, I mean, I can't say it's a small nerf. It's a nerf, but it, it hurts more than other nerfs because, um, of course a protection debuff is so good because it increases the damage of all your other abilities. Right. So by nerfing this, it kind of, after with the Cerberus kit, you're going to be doing less damage overall. So that's, that kind of sucks. Uh, for me, anyways. Hell, uh, minions are now healed for 50% of the amount. So, yeah, just a hell nerf overall, it looks like. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. She can't heal minions as much. And then this is the actual patch notes, uh, 8.10. I don't know if it has a release date. Let me refresh it just to make sure it has all the information. Uh, they probably said in the patch notes. I just didn't hear it. Um, but anyway, she can walk into walls every 10 seconds, one side of wall. She can move freely and use some of her abilities. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to look at was the numbers. Every 0.5 seconds, she loses 0.15% of her health, stacking in intensity up to 40 times. Uh, she cannot enter a wall while below 25% health or crippled. While inside a wall and for 5 seconds after exiting, she gains 10% physical ability life still. Oh, she so she gets life still too. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know why she gets life still while inside a wall. I mean, she should just get it when she leaves, but oh well. <laughs> so this is obviously a dumb question. And based on this part alone, I don't think you can do it. But I'm wondering if you could go a pure health build with Stone of Gaia and just all the health items in the game. <laughs> and just stay in the wall just be like nah i'm out <laughs> i don't think you could but that it's just funny to think about flickering visions so this was which one was this bolt of energy that explodes on this do 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 so is this the stealth one yeah this was the stealth one i think yeah okay so bolt damage 310 plus 70 percent of physical damage okay that hits pretty hard yeah that hits pretty hard um did i miss the ability i did yeah i okay I, I missed ability i'm sorry uh so this is the banshee ability scream damage 95 plus 40 percent of your physical power 
final hit damage through 230 plus 70 percent of your physical damage okay so that already has huge scaling on this ability um if you go a power build the damage numbers look high to me maybe they're not um just because you combine both of them the final hit will also cause enemies to be silenced to deafen for 1.5 seconds. Uh, yeah, again, I think a, a deafen is super strong in Smite, but since this is so short, uh, I don't think it's actually going to change the game. I don't think it's going to change the game much. I think they're kind of testing out this CC to see how it is, and then maybe they'll uh, have another god with a higher, a longer deafen, or maybe they just want to keep it short because it is a frustrating type of CC. Um, kind of like how blinds and Smite are very, very rare. They're usually very, really conditional as well. Uh, this one's not very conditional. You just have to hit the ability, it seems like. But uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to silent deafen someone and time it perfectly with the Thor ult. And then it's like, oh no, I didn't know Thor was going to ult me. Like, I feel like you're going to anticipate when you get deafened that stuff like that will happen anyways. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, it's something new. Uh, but yeah, 12 second cooldown. So... That seems like a solid ability. Lots of damage. Uh, and then back to this one. This was the Flickering Visions, the stealth one. Uh, she gets 40% movement speed? Oh my goodness. But yeah, a lot of what they were saying is very true. Stealths and Smite are very frustrating because they stealth in the jungle or somewhere far away where you have no idea. And then they're just right in front of you. Morgan does this. Al Kwong does this. Loki kind of does this. It used to be a lot more annoying. But that's kind of part of the frustrating part. And there's not really any cool in-combat stealths. And they, they that's kind of what they were mentioning. Is that like Morgan, she gets knocked out of the stealth right away. Loki's stealth isn't very good if he stealths right in front of you in the middle of a team fight, you know. Um, and then plus you can see him whenever he gets hit and all that. But this one's like a single target stealth. I, I like it. I think it's, it's cool. Um, the damage is actually pretty solid too. 310 plus 70% of your physical power. That's good scaling. Uh, but yeah, good ability. All the ability seems good. Um, okay, so dash damage. So this is the one where she dashes forward, and she can use it in the wall as well. So at max range, if she cancels dash upon refiring the ability, she will unleash a claw swipe that deals heavy damage. She can cast this while inside a wall, resulting in dash traveling further. Dash damage. Also, I love that you can use that in the wall. So this is 135 plus 20% physical power. Okay, so dash damage is pretty low. The claw damage... 290 plus 95% physical power. That's good. Yeah, so if you dash out of the wall, hit them with it. Like, think, like imagine Kernudos, how you can use the three, instantly cancel it, turn around, hit them with an auto. You could do that with this. You could go through them, instantly cancel it, hit the claw, and then auto attack. That's a lot of burst damage. I actually wonder how... Uh, she's an assassin, right? I think. Hydra's Lament. I wonder how that's going to be on her. Um, it seems like it would go well with her three. I don't know too much about the other abilities. She tears the veil between life and death, unleashing banshees in a line in front of her. After a brief delay, when it first opens, it deals heavy damage before dealing rift damage rapidly to targets in the area and slowing them. Yeah, so it has a first hit, and then it does the banshee damage or whatever. Enemies hit by subs uh, subsequent hits take less damage. The ability has two charges. Um, she can use the ability while inside a wall. When used this way, the veil is weakened and not fully torn. Instead, activating when the target gets too close. So opening damage, 650 plus 90% of physical power. So that's the part I think you could hit that consistently. Uh, the rest of the alt seems like you could just get out of the way. It's mostly for zoning. But the initial hit, it looked like you could hit that consistently. And keep in mind, she has two charges. So maybe you have to have a teammate slow them or whatever. But if you hit boom, boom. <laughs> that's already 1300 damage plus 180 percent of your physical power uh let's say she has transcendence or something like that that's that's instant death that is instant death um that that's gonna hit harder than like raw ult or something oh my god um because she has two charges on it so yeah um when it says subsequent hits, I don't think they mean if you use the two charges back to back. I think they just mean from the Banshee damage. So that's not just the ultimate, of course. Uh, the Rift damage is 240 plus 35% of your physical power. Okay, that's not possible for that to be per hit. I guess that's distributed between all the different hits. Maybe it is per hit. I don't know. 
Now, uh, slow stacks up to six times. Cooldown, 50 seconds. Cost is really low. Okay, uh, the rest of the abilities, I was like, all right, this is strong, strong, strong. This is like, to me, this seems like uh, insane, right? Maybe maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm just wrong, but that, that seems pretty insane. Okay, well... I guess uh, I guess we'll see. Oh, maybe it's harder to hit than it looked because it did have a little bit of a delay on it. Uh, you can use it as a traps um, for dual. Let's let's talk dual specifically because I'm a dual content creator. This ability, if you put it at both entrances of Demon King, oh my goodness! You you basically go for Demon King. Let's say they have it warded, and they're like, "All right, I'm gonna go try to steal it." They walk through the trap. It activates behind them. You turn on them. You go, I'm going to kill you now. And now they have no choice but to go back through the veil and take a ton of damage or to fight you. So, yeah, I, in, let's say in Duel specifically, I think she will be a good god. Not to mention that going inside the walls uh, next to tower and stuff will be really good as well. Or like setting the traps off behind their tower for like when they're trying to get away with no HP. Uh, yeah, no, she, she seems very fun. And then here's all the skins. Holy moly, there's a lot of skins. Okay, let's keep going down. Oh, also the Conquest map. Ooh, looks beautiful. Maybe I'll, I'll play some more Conquest. All right, bug fixes. I don't care about bug fixes too much, but jungle bosses won't be body blocked by pets. Oh, wow. That's actually really strong. Uh, it's funny that they took them very long to do this but uh yeah arachne could kind of cheese gold fury and stuff like that and now they can't okay good change oh they fixed the emote nice so we'll no longer longer be able to gain heat off of immune targets nice update the ability that's funny because that's a nerf <laughs> even though it counts as a bug update the ability to make the landing Fire feel more smooth and responsive. Currently, only his new skin has this effect. Uh, oh, it's a purely... It's a visual change. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, they fixed the Stanta's horizontal sight thing. Okay, that's funny. All right. Let's skip the bugs. The, the other bugs. Um, game modes. All right. Chinese Joust map. So, this is... Is this purely for Joust or for... Duel... We're applying a few balance changes and fixes to make sure that this map provides best possible joust experience. Uh, it seems like this is purely for joust. We're applying some fixes to the outer walls to better interact with abilities and increase the tankiness of Demon King to be much uh, to match more modern smite jungle bosses. Okay, that's good. Uh, even though it's for joust and not dual. Um, increased split bonus. Okay, fix various issues. Demon King, increased health, increased physical protection, increased magic protections. These changes apply to both Joust and Duel? Wait, what? So, for the longest time ever, Joust and Duel have different Demon King scalings. Because Demon King is squishier in Duel than in Joust. So, if they're making... If they said these both apply to Joust and Duel, they're going to make it so that Demon King is the same in Duel and Joust, I guess? Uh, Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I like Demon King being tankier because although I wish it would be changed to a different objective entirely because as a guardian, as guardians, I can't take them anyways. And my um, when somebody goes mannequins, they can take it in three seconds. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll prefer it being tankier any, any day. Okay, new art. Snow and ice have been added to the Conquest map. Yep. Lanterns can be destroyed with a single attack. Once destroyed, the lantern releases a cloud of mist in a circular area of the effect that lasts one minute. Respawns five seconds before the mist expires. Okay, what does the mist do? Gods inside the mist are hidden. They did it. They added the bush mechanic to smite. <laughs> like they have in League of Legends and every single other MOBA. Oh, that's hilarious. Reveal rules. Gods hiding inside mist will be briefly revealed if the god auto attacks, casts, or channels an ability to take damage. They hit by enemy abilities. Um... An enemy ward is placed inside the mist with them. Okay, abilities that grant stealth override the mist reveal rules. Minions will ignore gods inside min inside the mist unless the god is revealed. Okay, yeah, that's cool. That makes conquest uh, kind of cool. I mean, I obviously don't know how it's going to play, 
they've never added this spike for for reasons well actually i can't say never uh there was actually a bush mechanic for a while in conquest where you could walk in the bush and you would be invisible um but that was very shortly lived i think so yeah i guess it's not new green buff they're buffing the support buff yay uh increased base health and mana to 50 100 of each increase hp5 and mp5 increase the spawn time Okay, so now I don't think anyone will start at green buff because you're not supposed to. Decrease HP scaling per stack. Okay, cool. Oh. No, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool, cool. So it's a overall buff. Yeah, look at that map. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love the winter version of Conquest. What I like is it's not super dark and gloomy. It's it's still like it's just like happy Christmas vibes overall. I love that. They buff buffed elixir of defense. Let's go. That's actually pretty good. Uh warding sigil. When you are hit by an ability, you gain a stack of dampening, gaining five protections for five seconds. This occurs only once per ability per cast. So I think before it was just damage mitigation of all types of damage and now instead of its protections so that sounds like a nerf right yeah i mean i'd have to have to check the base stats and stuff decreasing damage taken by four second four percent for five seconds this can stack up to three times it feels very similar to what it does right now right i'd have to compare it i don't remember it exactly off the top of my head Oh, now now Infuse Sigil does physical damage. I I could have sworn it did magical damage before. I mean, I guess they probably put it in this paragraph, but I don't want to read. <laughs> I don't want to read big paragraphs right now. Uh, do this doing physical damage makes me want to build this on Guardians and Duel, because your opponent's not going to be building physical defense. That's fun. Okay, I like that for me, anyways. <laughs> uh, War Banner remove thirty physical power. Remove sixty magical power added 40 physical protection okay so they're making a tank item that just seems strictly worse but uh i mean it is definitely a tank item now which made more sense for war flag tanks were the ones that built it bumbo's dagger they're nerfing bumbo's dagger because they over buffed it fair enough mannequins no longer does four times burn to jungle bosses includes jungle scorpions oh thank goodness no more cheese and demon king now we'll do one times damage to those targets like it does to gods cool Okay, good mannequins nerf. Uh, I don't like the item, so any nerf is a welcome nerf. Um, they nerfed Cowl. I don't see Cowl very often in Duel. In other game modes, it's pretty good. And they nerfed Hunter's Cowls, okay. Pridwin. Pridwin now only scales based on protections from items. They're doing this to so many items. It makes me sad, but that's okay. Uh, is it a buff overall, though? Increased shield health, health scaling from... 100% to 125%. Increased magical damage scaling from 5% to 75%. So if you go full tank build, the item's better. If you build, if this is your only defense item, it's going to be worse. Okay, good change. Um, yeah, in, in that in that regard, I would say good change. Spectral armor no longer reduces damage from magical crits. Why not? Why why not? This affects all run and mages or guardians hitting a target from affected of fail moths passive effect. I feel like I feel like if magical crits are going to become more common, there should be something for magical crits. And Spectral Armor gave physical defense, so it was like, if you're building Spectral to counter all run, that feels fair, <laughs> even though it's weird. It feels fair, because you're not even going magical defense, but all right. Uh, Tiamat, decrease percent mitigations. Uh, okay, good. She's less tanky, thank God. Decrease magical power scaling from 35% to 30%. Okay, so less damage. Looks like less damage for Raijin as well. Oh, I saw this buff. Uh, this buff is awesome. I love it. Um, so before, right now, Sylvanas is passive. You only get the upgraded part of it, where it lowers your cooldowns by one second at level 20. And then now it's going to be at level 17, which is better. It would be nice if it scaled more to level 17, like being 0.25 seconds, 0.5 seconds, 0.75 seconds. 
But it, level 17 is a lot easier to get to. So welcome, a uh, welcome change, a good change. Huge Charybdis buffs. I, I saw this as well. Uh, just huge Charybdis buffs overall. Um, decreased item reduction for 35% to 30%. Yeah. Yeah, these are huge Charybdis buffs if you want to look, go through them. They're, they're buffing her 1, they're buffing her passive, they're buffing her auto attacks. Uh, and then they're buffing her ultimate so she can move in all directions while on her ultimate as well now. Which is just, just insane. So all those changes should make her a little bit better. Um, Kernunos now deals damage to minions and jungle caps. Oh, they made his ult. Uh, so now Kernunos can ult the wave and channel his inner on her main. Uh, okay, all run. They buffed his two. So basically, you know how with all run two, you gain ammo by hitting auto attacks, and then you can fire it again, and it shoots like a machine gun. Uh, the way they explained it is the first shots will do more damage now. So it'll still get reduced the more shots you hit, but the first shots will hit a little bit harder now. So yeah, so there's that. Um, Earth Shaker, uh, the buff Vulcan Alt, lower cooldown. Noxious Fumes now deals bonus damage when it successfully stuns an enemy combined with Agni's Fire abilities. Oh, okay. That actually makes it good to level up. Because most people, what used to happen in the past is people would just put one point in Agni Alt and they would never level, or Agni 1, and they would never level it up because it costed more mana. Then they changed it so that the mana uh, was cheaper and the cooldown actually got reduced as you leveled it. So to incentivize people leveling it up. I think this will actually make it worth leveling up now uh, entirely. Although, again, people have been doing it for a while now. But still, just give some smite lore on Agni. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, now, it, now it's going to do a little bit of damage. That makes Agni better. I, I'm, I don't love Agni, but I guess he could use a little bit of a buff in terms of that. <clears throat> his two now costs less damage. And his, th his ultimate costs mana now. Let's go... Uh, my brother and I would always joke about how good Agni all is. And of course, Agni hasn't been in the meadow for a while now, but there was a while when he was being picked nonstop. And yeah, Agni ult doesn't cost mana. And that always blew our minds. So now it costs 10, which is, sounds so little, but it actually makes me happy. Um, huge Mulan buffs. Or I guess not huge, but small Mulan buffs. So it's easier to level up her abilities now. And hitting minions will level up the abilities faster. Okay. Okay, they buffed Amaterasu one. Oh, no, wait, wait. Increased. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same late game, better early game. Okay. Yeah, because it was pretty good late game. It's just early game, it felt lackluster. Um, And then she gets more damage mitigations in the early game. Okay, so she's the same at level 20, same exact god, but she has an easier time getting there. Those are some good, cool changes I like when a god is feeling... when they It's fine in the late game, but they're just so out of the meta because of their early game. Changes Small changes like this can have really help a god out. Uh, increased damage. Okay, so they're buffing Achilles. Isn't that his 3? So that, that's basically double this damage. So instead of 190, it's going to be uh, 380. Uh, compared to now 400. My bad. So 380 is what it was. Now it's going to be 400 because you can use it twice. That's a hard hitting ability. Okay, but that is that. That is the patch notes. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry that this video is so long. I just wanted to go everything and give my thoughts on Duel. That's what I'm trying to do lately. Uh, just good, good stuff overall. Good, good patch. I will say uh, they said they tested everything for the the passive for the new god and there's no way there's going to be some weird edge case there's going to be like if you get dodgy ulted right as you go in or i don't know some some weird effect is going to happen like or like abilities that link to you and then when she disappears it's going to bug out the game there will be something if there is not hats off to high res because this ability i think is very understandable if it's going to be buggy because it's so insane right uh, the passive, but no good stuff overall. I, when I heard she could walk through walls, I thought it was going to be some cheesy effect and it was not going to be good. It was just going to be a disappointment, but no, this lived up to its expectations big time. 
uh, and then some because of the using abilities in the wall and all that good stuff too. So really cool god overall. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.